Dr. Bill gave me that idea, and here I am many moons later, eight years later, and the, um, the athletes, over 1,000 people, some official interviews such as this one, some uh, at a dinner party, at a gym where I met them, and I've asked these people, some maybe in two minutes, some, some in over the course of weeks of interviews and conversations, what about this issue of the aging athlete? What about this issue of less than 10%? And all but two, and over 1,000 people year, uh, to date, to date over 1,000 people, all but two have said, my core of people, it's less than 10%. So I want to ask Dr. Bill if he's ever heard that statistic, what he thinks about it, and what do you think is contributing to that? I think uh, it's probably accurate, sadly. The findings of Sifu Slim's years of research suggest that less than 10% of retired performance athletes practice regular fitness or at least intentional daily physical movement after their sports careers. This demographic group just like the rest of modern humans, tends to suffer the consequences of a sedentary lifestyle. Less than, certainly less than 20, probably less than 10, and I'm an optimist, so uh, less than 10% I think is pretty accurate. Standing and, and movement standing, so you're lifting one leg, maybe putting it on something that's a little bit higher and you're, and you're doing some movement standing, that's a lot better than sitting, wouldn't you agree? I agree, okay. yeah. So, the more motion, the better. Standing is better than sitting. Sitting puts undue stress on intervertebral discs and other parts that are subject to wear and tear. I said, is it more important to win the big game or have a well life? And that took them a little bit to think about because they had to think back 30 years, 40 years of being in the competition when their coach, their parents, the fans, and they themselves were thinking, we have to win this game no matter what tonight, and maybe took a shot of cortisone or took an anti-inflammatory or a lot of them and iced things and got back out there to try to win that game. And does that do your body good, do you think, when you're playing injured? I think the answer is both to some degree. So okay. I think that uh, if you can train right and do it uh, in a healthy manner, that there's nothing wrong with winning. And then, more importantly, is big picture, you know, what's going to happen to your body over the next 40 to 50 to 60 years, depending on what your age is when you're competing. So I think uh, that we, we do things sometimes for athletes that are a little short-sighted. The occasional cortisone injection from events, an example, that has a, a potential toll, but used, uh, so we have different things we can do for people. And ultimately, if you can do it with natural training, fitness, nutrition, and the things we all know about, uh, that's the best, the best option. So you said 10% is ER right now? That's what you do? Uh, no, probably less. Less than so that. So I do, most of my practice is elective. I do a lot of knee replacements and partial knees with robotics, and uh, still do shoulder knee reconstructions for athletes with ligament injuries. Who are these uh, athletes we're looking at here? So this is uh, Quinn Cody, who is, uh, was a uh, legendary motocross rider, won the Baja 1000 multiple times. He's no longer uh, riding, Okay. but he's probably, uh, I'm gonna say approaching 40-ish, and... Uh, ancient for that sport? Uh, not too ancient, mm -hmm. but he's, uh, He's, let's say he's crashed his bike a few times. Evil can evil. Yeah. And then we've got Todd Rogers on yeah, the I bottom. Took this, uh, I actually took this photograph uh, back, jeez, uh, what year is this? And this is after they'd won their gold medal. And that was at uh, East Beach. Uh, yeah, these are a couple elite athletes that uh, did well. This is uh, Joel Baker, who's the US uh, polo coach and polo player who uh, um, was back riding his horse about four weeks after his knee replacement. And uh, so he's, uh, he's one, one of our all-stars. James O. Mahoney was the original Ronald McDonald. Uh -huh. who did the, in, in, the clown the skateboard. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's a guy who's still charging at skating with some new parts. Where, is he in Santa Barbara? He's in Santa Barbara. Huh. Yeah, he owned the uh, Santa Barbara Surf Museum. There's some other 
Brad Garlock of Jaws. He's a big, big wave rider who I got to know uh, through the Pro Surf Tour. I used to travel as one of their doctors and um, helped a few of these guys out. I was at Haiku at, at that spot and lived there for like two months in 2010 and 11. And then a female surfer. That's Heather, Heather Hudson Crummer, who's a, a good friend, who's a, a, a she did a couple of uh, surf documentaries called Women of the Waves and Women of the Waves 2, which uh, um, actually has a lot of uh, wisdom about uh, surfing as a sport and uh, a lot of the health and well-being stuff that yeah. you are uh, espousing. Into, yeah. yeah, espousing is in there. And uh, yeah, and the, the surf culture, many of those people consider it a religion. I've met jugglers who consider what they do a religion. That's how they get to some elite level and they get the spiritual connection and it's it becomes um, a muscle memory type thing and a, a rote, it's in, it's in their system. And I, I would guess surgery after this many years, well they keep changing how you do surgery, right? It changes but it's uh, it's muscle memory and, and uh, so doing something 10,000 times as you know makes it a bit easier and uh, and more fun sometimes. So you can keep everybody lighthearted through a, a, a challenging sometimes. 20 minutes or an hour? Yeah, that's good to be yeah. lighthearted in your job. So there it is, the new office from two years ago? 2015. 2015, almost three years. It'll be three years in September we moved in here, but I, was, I went into solo practice January of 2015. Fantastic, so you're, you're going to keep working for how long? I may have another good 20 left in me. Wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving it, I enjoy it, so. You meet a lot of new people. I do, yeah, yeah, every day, so I'm having a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Bill Galvan, orthopedic surgeon specializing in joint reconstruction and sports medicine, and I have a recommendation you check out Sifu Slim's newest book, which is called What Today's Elite Athletes Wish Their Parents Had Told Them. I think you'll find it quite helpful, and you'll find some things to pass on to your kids. Fantastic. So uh, wish you all the best, Dr. Bill Galvan, and uh, we'll connect uh, very soon about some of the things that we, we shared today. Great. Thanks, Sifu.